we learn to, uh, to adapt and work with it. But welcome to all of you to uh, Parkway North High School. I'm very delighted to be hosting this as our last Project Parkway meeting of the school year. And also, as many people have pointed out to me tonight, this is your last Project Parkway meeting, Jenny. So, I'm very It has truly been an honor to work with this endeavor. I think that it is, uh, it is very challenging to work in a big school district and try to make, uh, make a plan for all of the constituents to be working together. And, um, and I was lucky enough to be part of the Project Parkway Steering Committee at the very beginning where we developed the mission and worked on the uh, vision plan and the action steps. And so I have always uh, taken great pride in that. As we were doing that um, as a district, we were also doing that in the North High community. And so the, uh, the language that we chose as the North High mission mirrors very closely the district mission. And I really believe that it is something that we, uh, that we live out every day. I could talk for a long time about the wonderful things that happen here at North. I'm just going to share uh, one quick story, and that is from uh, last Thursday. We did um, something that I have been hoping we would do for many, many years. We, a year ago, decided on the day of our Special Olympics event that we were going to, one year from that day, have an all-school service learning day. And I have never seen a community come together like this community did last Thursday when every single one of our 1,186 students were either here working with the uh, uh, Special Olympics for off-campus, 600 kids off-campus at sites around the county and in the city serving our community. It was a magnificent endeavor, and the pictures and the stories that the kids have told, even the ones where you would think, I don't know that this kid is really going to be somebody we want to have interacting with other people. You know, they, came back, they came back and shared the most stories of what they learned about um, about their experiences and so the staff members were wonderful and the students were wonderful and it was just a, a really a wonderful way to celebrate that which is part of my work um, caring about and when I talk about our mission and we talk about social responsibility that really is the heart of what uh, what part of my North is so um, I am very proud of a lot of the work, of all of the work that we have done here, and a lot of the, the things that we have done over the years that I've been here. I am very proud to be able to introduce Tori Kane. I don't know where Tori is.
appreciate everything you've done to help me. And um, at this time, I would like to turn the microphone over to Dr. Keith Marty, and he will continue on the program tonight. was able to uh, make some time and highlight. And I just want to say, uh, I've worked with quite a few uh, administrators and principals over the years, and uh, I feel like sometime I was uh, mentored by Jenny <laughs> when she said the thing to us because uh, she ran such a, a, a great school and it just it was so wise in so many ways. And I think anybody who's ever worked with Jenny would really appreciate uh, her knowledge and uh, her collaborative approach and just her child-centeredness. So Jenny, congratulations. Desi Kirchhofer. Uh, this will be his last uh, project. Well, maybe not. We'll get yeah, back. Yeah, I, I learned too much. You're <laughs> uh, But uh, Desi, as you know, is, uh, is taking the superintendency at Northwest. Uh, he started that transition. And, uh, you know, I just want to just first of all say that uh, the Project Parkway <laughs> leadership the last several years under Desi's leadership has been superb. Uh, Desi uh, took us really through a very important transition from Project Parkway 1.0 into 2.0. And he did it with great care and great community involvement. Um, the listing sessions, the analysis of those results, uh, the surveys, uh, really working through that with the board and the administrators and of course our whole community is really complimentary. That's not easy. Oftentimes in strategic planning, it's very, that, that's, that transition from phase one to phase two can all, sometimes be the end of the plan or people get uh, disillusioned that things are gonna be carried on. And Desi did a magnificent job. Besides that, he has such great spirit and great, great uh, wisdom and, and great leadership in so many other areas that uh, I just want to also take an opportunity to thank Desi for his leadership, wish him well, and uh, really understand how important and vital he's been to the, the district, Project Parkway, and certainly so many of our lives. Desi, We've shaped these, uh, these uh, quarterly meetings this year, and Des will probably explain in a few minutes. We've tried to use some of the, the themes we got out of last year's uh, listening sessions. And so the theme tonight is certainly one of those uh, that we've continued throughout the year. I'll let uh, Desi talk more about that. But I've, I've really been excited and pleased by uh, this year. I'm hoping that as we uh, transition to next year, uh, we'll continue these, uh, these meetings. Uh, certainly one of the things that we'll be dealing with more next year under Chelsea Watson's leadership uh, is uh, getting ready for uh, a bond of vote, or bond, uh, likely bond vote in the fall of 2018. So some of our Project Parkway work next year will undoubtedly be devoted to some of that work, but not entirely, but some of that, uh, some of our sessions, some of our work next year will be, be that. So continually come. We appreciate your involvement this year. Thank you. Particularly thank you if you're, I know we have a lot of staff members, but we really appreciate the community members that are here and continue to come as well. Bring other people to future meetings uh, next year. It's now my pleasure to introduce our, our, our brand new board president, but not a new board member. Uh, in my tenure here, uh, this will be my fourth time, my fourth year working with Beth Feldman as board president. So uh, we are glad to have Beth and glad to have her back as president. And uh, her wisdom, her leadership is going to be valuable in the next year as we go through a lot of changes in the district. So Beth Feldman, our new board president, who's going to also be the
And um, the last two years as president, he's a hard act to follow, but I'm going to do my best. So anyway, I also I want to say a couple things real quick. Uh, I want to talk about the person who leads the work of Project Parkway. And if any of you are ever asked to leave Project Parkway, I strongly suggest you say no thank you. <laughs> because it's been the kiss of death, because every fantastic Parkway staff member that has led Project Parkway has left us to go on to bigger and better things. And I personally think it's time now that they start coming back, now they've gotten all this training. So um, anyway, Desi, one day, maybe in our future, we'll see you back. But in the meantime, thank you for your leadership, and you've done a phenomenal job. And hung out, hung around longer than most people have. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have, oh, there you are. I don't know where Jenny, right here she is. So under Jenny's leadership in the last few years, North High is undergoing a fantastic transformation. And it is all because of Jenny advocating for her school, her building, and her students every single day. <coughs> so some of the changes that have gone on in my cheat sheet right here, um, things that they've been working on that I know they've needed to work on for a very long time, are the choir room, band room, orchestra room, the new room, the new AC units. That's work that will be done this day. I see Just Wagon back there nodding his head, very happy. <coughs> Um, in uh, this coming summer, they're going to be working on the fine arts uh, room, which I can tell you when one of my first tours here nine years ago, I know it needed work. It was so time to so I'm glad to see that. All the art rooms are being expanded, the dressing rooms for drama and the drama classrooms. But then the really exciting stuff will happen in 2008, summer of 2018, and Jenny, you have an open invitation to come back and visit where they're going to expand the serving area. I know the students will be happy with that. And the principal's office and the nurse's office are going to move down there. So all good things all in store for, for your High and mostly the president. So thank you, Jenny. OK. Thank you, President Feldman. Appreciate your comments. Uh, and, uh, and thank you, everybody. It has been a pleasure to uh, be part of this work. So bottom line is, what is Project Parkway again? It's about uh, continuing to improve, a continuous improvement process. And that is something that Parkway is always willing to embrace and always be part of, always trying to get better. Um, I'm proud to be part of a district that embraces its role as a, as a leader in the area and a leader in the country. And so, so it's been a pleasure to be part of that. Uh, tonight, let me run down a little bit of when we get to, we're, we're just getting to the agenda sort of now. So when we get to the heart of some things, uh, if you haven't had anything to eat and you get to the taco bar, you need to do so. It's delicious, four different kinds uh, of serving. It's good stuff. So and, and thank you, Julie. Clean me up a little bit. I slopped some on me a little bit when I was digging in. So it's good stuff. Um, so really, to sort of frame the night a little bit is, uh, Dr. Marty mentioned, we listened last year, and on our listening tour, we heard a lot of things that we've addressed in our other prior meetings about character education, about personalized learning, about global studies and learning. Um, and those were sort of on what do what kids need in the future topics. But when we asked about some things currently, like what would be your top priority if you were Dr. Martin, if you were the superintendent, what should you be maybe focused on? Or what are maybe some obstacles that kids face we, we had a look at uh, physical activity, was up? more physical activity for kids, better nutrition for kids. So it was kind of this, this theme of health for kids. Um, and then social, emotional, their, their wellness from that. So that's, that's sort of framing tonight, it was listening to what we heard and then bringing in some uh, experts in each, uh, each of those areas I just mentioned. And the first person that I will uh, introduce here shortly um, will kind of give us a, a uh, an overview of how these things are sort of connected. Well, not even sort of how they are connected. How the, how the health and well-being is a direct influence on learning and growth and brain development. Uh, and then we'll hear from four different folks uh, in different categories. And we're doing this, uh, if anybody's ever heard of a presentation called Ignite Style. So we're going to do sort of Ignite Light tonight. 
It's sort of like that. What the idea behind an Ignite presentation is kind of to whet somebody's appetite. So you have five minutes, 15 seconds per slide, and you kind of roll three. So you get the short, succinct message about what it is, and then if interested, learn more in breakout sessions. So that's sort of the framework, and I say like because we're I'm a little nervous for our presenters because that's time. That's a tough time schedule to stay on. So we're going to stay close to that, right? Except you, you, our keynote here, you probably just like, that's a little bit of extended time. So we're, we're going to hear a little bit uh, more from that. So you hear from areas of health service. You'll hear from Dr. Robin Wallen in physical act, uh, activity. You'll hear from Ron Ramsbot for nutrition. Uh, Marlene Piper will be here. And then in the social emotional side, um, Aaron Schulte will. Uh, so those will be the quick run. So with that, I want to introduce sort of our keynote, if you will, for tonight. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit about the whole school. Make sure I get the order right. Whole community, whole child. We get right to say. Um, so it's Laura Beckman. And I want to just give you a little bit about her work and who she is. Because some of you have known Laura and worked with her, um, but, but many of you may have not. So, uh, 28 years of educational service in public schools as a teacher, curriculum coordinator. She continues to be heavily involved in fields of health, physical education, wellness at the local, state, and national levels. Within the past 15 years, Laura served as curriculum coordinator in both Burke Florissant School District and Rockwood. Under her direction, multiple local, state, and federal grants were awarded for improved wellness within the schools and communities they serve. Um, she has partnered with Missouri Foundation for Health, St. Louis County Department of Health, University of Missouri-St. Louis, BJC Healthcare, Missouri Department of Transportation, Midwest Area Council, Fitness Grant, among many others. Um, so uh, she's, she's presented nationally and at the state level. Uh, she's received many awards for achievements in the areas of physical education, health, and wellness. She assumes a leadership role in state association is on, and serves on other uh, boards. She's also the co-founder and serves as partner of the Unified Wellness. She knows a lot. She knows her stuff. She's been doing it for a long time, and she's been doing it really well. And we are very, very pleased to have her here tonight, Laura. Thank you. Schools are a perfect setting for this collaboration. 
So the first tenet was help healthy students. Each student in our school healthy and learns about practices of a healthy lifestyle. Inside of those, now on that paper that you're reading about health, it has the different criteria that schools should be looking at to address the health needs of students. On number two, it's about the safety of students. Each student learns in an environment that is physically and emotionally safe for students and adults. Again, the criteria is outlined on that second paper that is in your packet. The other tenets, being engaged, being supported, and being challenged, follow that. And they also have criteria that are addressed in this ASCD full child approach. The most promising strategies include the following. Every sector, prevention, intervention, and promotions should be a part of the health and well-being of children. <clears throat> what defines academic achievement? These are the following things that define what academic achievement is. Your performance, your behavior, your cognitive skills, and attitudes. So there's a lot of things that schools have to address with children in schools for them to be motivated and learn. When they look at the lengths of research, here's what healthy eating and academic achievement show. The dietary behavior issues as they are related to academic achievement outcomes. So these are just a few of the different types of links through research that we have found. In addition to that, physical activity and academic achievement. Physical activity also addresses it. And I know that the other people who will be following me, the other presenters, will have a lot to show some of the parkway uh, initiatives that they're doing to address things. But it does show a definite uh, link. Here are some other key things that have been pulled from various pieces of research, over 30 years of research. And it continues. What are some things that we can do as a, uh, as a state as a school district. These are just sample examples, but there are lots of resources out there that you can look specifically to each group to improve health and well-being of students. But specifically in school districts, it's really looking at collecting data on health and educational behaviors and outcomes and assessing the benefits of how it's helped um, improve Schools, parents, students, they can all contribute in various ways. And again, these are examples of how they can contribute. Healthy food, physical education, parents are involved and they have a voice with the education of, um, of health factors in the school district. Students are advocates for health and well -being. Some of the evidence that I've collected across the state uh, in Missouri, and I brought this is that if you do change, and you begin to really take the research and put it into practice, you can effectively change health behaviors in students, which effectively change achievement. In this particular one, this school district was looking at increasing physical activity behaviors. They did a variety of things. They increased physical activity opportunities. They improved their curriculum. They had staff wellness type activities. They had employee, uh, employees acting as role models and addressing health uh, in a variety of ways. And within two years in the elementary, they had increased physical activity levels of the elementary five students by 13% in meeting 60 minutes of activity a day. In the secondary, they weren't quite done with, the research, with writing the curriculum and the professional development. So they went down, but as you can see, as they began to implement it, it began to rise. So when you begin to change policy, and you begin to have processes and practices in place, you can change behaviors. Um, kids perform better academically. In Naperville, Illinois, they have taken activity before 
were students who were struggling with math and reading. They put them in a 30 minute to an hour aggressive cardiorespiratory uh, program in the mornings, zero hour PE, and their reading scores had improved by 1.4 the next year. Again, taking research and putting it in practice. Discipline referrals, a comprehensive physical activity program, not just physical activity, education, after school and before school activity programs, brain breaks in the classroom, uh, uh, lots of different things that they integrated, which decreased discipline uh, referrals. Another one about attendance. In accreditation, you need 9 to 5 percent. In this uh, particular school district, every time a child met a fitness standard or did not meet a fitness standard, they dropped, and it was three years of data in a row that showed that each time they dropped one of those four fitness standards, they dropped the tents. Uh, uh, communication arts, same thing. If you look at the map, they, they used to have the map scores, again, showing that students who are more fit do better in school. And and I know that Parkway has begun to collect a lot of this data, and we'll probably share that. Social and emotional is becoming the second problem and, uh, in our nation. So if you look at some of the statistics of social and emotional health, which will let the speaker talk even more about that. And we see a lot of things happening on TV or that are disturbing in the news lately, haven't we? Again, Abuse, firearms, suicide, violence, again, social and emotional problems that are becoming more and more prevalent. In Missouri students, we are collecting data, we're one of states, eight states collecting data that are showing different health care needs. So your nurses in every school are collecting this information and sending it to the state. Notice the increase in anxiety, depression post-traumatic syndrome, stress syndrome, seizures. And our 504 plans have doubled, and our medications have almost tripled. They're more than double. So our nurses are quite busy, I think. Risk and protective factors, what we're wanting to do is to try to increase those protective factors. And the issue is um, that a lot of times those are beginning to develop at a very young age. The CDC has lots of this information, so you can pull all these fact sheets about uh, grades and how it's related to risk factors in children today. If we know all these, if we know that healthy children are better learners, and we know that we can influence behaviors, and we know that it contributes to healthy communities, then we need to begin to promote our culture and a use of public health perspective. So identifying health issues in your community, using intervention from all levels, utilizing community resources, and again, all sectors being involved. We need to develop protective factors. We need to be able to identify risk factors and how to assess them. We need to develop appropriate knowledge and behavior skills, identify barriers to our learning, what's happening in our schools, and begin to track the relationship between these two. And we have lots of data. So my question to you before I look is what type of data do you track? What forms do you use? What systemic reflection are you using to show the relationship of what you are actually doing, the changes that you're making, and how it's really impacting health behaviors, and educational outcomes. What professional report, report resources are you using? There are tons of resources out there. So again, that will be another day, another night. But again, um, lots of resources that you can pull that can help uh, recommendations and strategies for each of those sectors that are outlined in that approach. So I'm going to finish here. We can do all the different teaching, uh, help teachers with professional development, and, and do all of these different things to try to.
address our children, but we can't do it without addressing the head first. So I hope that helped. It was fast and furious, but I hope that it gives sort of some insight of how the WISP model works and a little bit about what's happening today. parents 
which carry over to that next generation. More and more research is supporting the benefits of exercise, or as we call it in the PE world, moderate to vigorous physical activity. This research is connected, as Laura pointed out, to uh, brain, the brain and learning. Dr. John Rennie and Dr. John Medina have uncovered the numerous benefits of physical activity on mood, attention, memory, and learning. Even moderate levels of physical activity can boost your brain power by increasing neurological activity. Not only does exercise increase neurological activity, but it also increases blood flow to the brain. So it, it helps promote neurogenesis. Colin, what's that? New brain cells. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> the next section of the infographic shows the current realities of physical activity in Parkway. Parkway provides bouts of physical activity in physical education programs and at recess at the elementary level, and some middle schools have recess as well. Unfortunately, physical activity opportunities are fewer at the high school level, where only two semesters of physical education are required during a student's four years. Parkway does beat all the minutes of physical activity required by Missouri law. However, it is important to note that physical activity levels drop significantly right where our physical activity requirement drops for middle school and high school. And I'm probably really messing up this video, am I? And I just noticed that, yeah, okay. I'll try to, I'll try to stay in one place. That's right. While extracurricular sports may provide additional opportunities for physical activity, fewer than 40% of high school students participate in a school-sponsored sport. In addition, many high school students on a high academic path find it difficult to fit in physical education courses in their schedule, especially any courses that are beyond the two-course requirement. Physical fitness is a product of physically active youth. In Parkway, we have seen fitness levels increase over the course of the last decade. We are continuing to see fitness levels decrease as our students get, um, get older. In middle school, where we now have daily physical education, we are seeing more improvements in physical fitness. In Parkway, while, fit, this, uh, in Parkway, while fitness levels are improving overall, less than half of the students are unable to attain the healthy fitness standard on all five state adopted fitness grant assessments. The standards are benchmarks, benchmarks for minimal levels of physical fitness. In Parkway, we have been collecting fitness data for many years, but recently we have begun comparing fitness scores to the results on standardized testing. In Parkway, we have shown correlations between increased fitness and communication arts and math scores on the math assessment. One of the most important indicators of good fitness is aerobic fitness. Aerobic fitness has the strongest correlation to learning and academic success. As seen in this graph, you will see that ninth grade boys, identified by the orange line at the bottom, show the lowest levels of aerobic fitness as compared to fifth grade and seventh grade boys. On this next slide, you will see ninth grade girls also have the lowest levels of aerobic fitness compared to fifth grade and seventh grade girls. So as you see, physical activity levels decrease for high school students. We also see a decrease in aerobic fitness. Logic would also suggest that it is um, also limiting the capacity of the brain to learn. The Centers for Disease Control views schools as an ideal setting for teaching youth about active lifestyles. The implementation of a comprehensive school physical, act uh, physical activity program is recommended by the CDC as a multi-component and collaborative approach to helping students get the 60 minutes of physical activity that they need each day. A quality physical education program, such as the one we have in Parkway School District, is the foundation for the comprehensive school physical activity program. In Parkway, we have, five, uh, we have six standards and 42 learning outcomes at each grade level, including an, an entire standard devoted to physical activity and fitness. 
In Parkway, we are striving to find ways to meet our mission of developing capable, curious, caring, and confident students. Developing physical fitness and promoting physical activity is a step towards a well-rounded student who will have greater capacity to achieve our mission. If you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you'll know that to reach the top where you're self-actualized, um, you have to have that foundation, right? As Laura pointed out, do you know what word and what behavior lives at the top of the pyramid? Curiosity. If you found any of this information interesting and would like to continue conversations about how to promote physical activity in Parkway, please join me in the gymnasium um, following the next three presenters. I should also take this opportunity to promote our district-wide family fitness day, which is called Let's Move in Parkway. So come join us on May 7th. Um, for a lot of fun fitness activities. Thank you.
and this year that number has risen to 1,123. Anaphylaxis is the life-threatening allergic reaction that can happen when someone is exposed to an allergen. We have a protocol for responding to allergic emergencies with a life-saving drug called epinephrine. With the rising incidence of food allergies has also come the increased incidence of the number of students experiencing anaphylaxis at school. This school year alone, there have been nine episodes of anaphylaxis in our students. In response to this growing concern, Parkway has begun developing a food safety protocol to try and decrease the opportunities for students to experience a life-threatening reaction in school. This protocol will go into effect next school year and will put practices in place to lessen the sharing of food at school. One activity that many people may not be aware of are the health-related supports that we provide for students. For students who fail vision screening at school or who lack health resources, our nurses collaborate with community resources to ensure that students are able to be evaluated by a vision specialist and get glasses if needed. We also coordinate oral health services for students. Some of our schools actually bring dental services into the school buildings, providing oral health screenings, cleanings, and even remediation services. We additionally partnered with a service called Give Kids a Smile and take students twice a year to a free dental clinic in St. Louis. This helps to ensure that the oral health needs will be met and that students will be healthy and ready to learn. Finally, the Parkway School District has an award-winning employee wellness program. In partnership with our insurer, United Healthcare, we have an on-site wellness coordinator who works with wellness leaders in each of our buildings to support wellness activities. We believe that a healthy workforce is a critical component to promoting healthy students. So, if any of these activities spark some questions in your mind, or if you would like an opportunity to share some thoughts with us about school health, please join me in room 1602 after this discussion.
and their breakfast program. So here is the Becky Bear. During our program evaluation, we actually sent out surveys, and this is a great wordle that we came up with for our students survey their feedback. Some of the likes they had, of course, they like their friends, they like the food, I see pizzas there, and lunchtime. Some of the parents took surveys too, and their feedback were options in kids and lunch, and food and variety. One of the other things that stood out greatly with the parents would be the time for the students to eat. They feel like their students didn't have enough time to eat. And I'll just make a little note here. Is it does take longer to eat healthy foods, like to eat an apple or peel an orange, than it does to eat pudding or eat a cookie. So we do need the time for them to take it to eat it. Um, here again, this is West Middle. So we show their uh, breakfast bar here. They have bagels and cream cheese. They also, we also offer a low fat cream cheese. And we have yogurt. And then it's kind of hard to see here, but we have some fresh fruit and vegetables too for breakfast. Our breakfast cart here, so we had a great day with the breakfast cart. I have to give kudos to Kathy Wallace at Central Middle. She helped us get this together. We were actually able to win a grant from the Midwest Dairy uh, folks, and that was the first grant that we had won in 27 years, at least for us in the nutrition department. A lot of times we don't get offered grants because our free and reduced numbers are so low. Total free and reduced is only 20%. So often we don't qualify, but we actually got to team up with Fuel Up to Play 60 and Greg Zerline came in, and the kids were really excited about this too. It's a great day. This is Sorrento School, and um, they are that actually this is where our staff was awarded the t-shirts and the silly straws and each student in the um, in the school got a silly straw too and it was from the West Area. Oh, this is actually a video. This is students participating in making a video of why breakfast is so important to them. <coughs>
trying to do here because not many of you may know we only really have four kitchens out of all 30 buildings that we service. Three of them right now send food out to satellite schools. Well, when they run out of food, they have to take the trucks, fire them up, and get the food back out to the satellite schools. This way, with the addition of these ventless ovens, actually we send extra that the cafeteria staff right there can cook their, their servings that they need when they run short so that they don't have to call for a hot shot. So the food is fresher too. We like to use these for our vegetables. Talking about getting uh, our staff ready, we did have Dr. Wallen come and talk to us about allergies. Uh, we partnered with the nurses and we want to know the protocol because we're right there with the students every day when they're eating. So we needed to recognize the signs of an allergen or um, any kind of anaphylactic reaction, whether a little one says my tongue feels furry or my mouth is itchy. So we ran our group through it and it was very nice of Dr. Wallen to come and tell us what the steps were and that we should partner with um, each nurse in every building so we know what the protocol is to keep our students safe. And then of course, um, talking about the atmosphere with the equipment, we like to have fun with the kids too. This is Northeast Middle and they love to dress up. This was um, their Indian day, I think it was Halloween, but dress up. And then some of our opportunities ahead for the future would be to increase this communication of what we actually do. Sending out blasts, working with the public relations people, um, offer more favorite foods um, more often, frequently. Enhance breakfast participation, and that might even include a second chance breakfast. But there again, it would be a partner with the administration of every building to make sure that that works in their schedule. So if a student came late on the bus, or drove late or was dropped off late, could they still get a second breakfast, or not a second, but have a second chance at breakfast before they go to class? Even if breakfast was over, technically, could we still serve them again? Could we take that mobile card that you saw uh, with our celebration for fuel up to play 60? Could we take that down the hall and make sure that we capture every student if they didn't get a breakfast, just so that they're equipped to learn for the morning? And then this is Chef Dan Street. He would like a centralized production center. And actually, all of us would because we would have standardized recipes. We'd have all the cooks in one location. And we could watch for allergies to cross-contamination to protect our students. But um, we're going to need some money for that one. <laughs> and then I just want to say thank you on behalf of my team for letting us so often come before you and just uh, tell you our dreams and what we're doing, share with you what we're doing for our students um, to keep them healthy and her way. Thank you. I have only five minutes and I think I could 
like the rest of my colleagues could talk about this for a very long time. Um, but one of the issues that we're seeing again as a rise in, in the, across the nation, but also here in Parkway, um, is the rise of anxiety in students. And we're seeing that at younger and younger ages. We are seeing that elementary, middle, and high school it may look a little different, but more kids are facing this. And again, that's not just a Parkway thing, that's across the country. There's a lot of different thoughts about why this might be. Um, so certainly social media would be potentially a factor, um, pressure to be successful, pressure to do well in school, the kind of high stakes testing that we do with students can create anxiety. Um, so that is something that we have really been looking at and trying to help students with. Um, and one method that we have found some success with and are working toward making um, larger at Parkway or more widespread here in Parkway is the use of yoga and mindfulness to help with this. And um, that's not just the counseling things. We have lots of schools who are training teachers, training PE teachers, but also classroom teachers because it can be a nice brain break, um, yoga or mindfulness. So this is a picture actually just from, I think it was last week at Bellary Elementary. And they had a whole mindfulness night, and they're doing a great job of training lots of their staff members with this. Um, so we've seen some success with it, and research would show that yoga and mindfulness really helps with this in a couple of different ways. One way is um, via the brain. So there's a lot of brain research about what happens in your brain when stress is happening, and um, your amygdala is something that reacts. So people who practice yoga and mindfulness um, the, uh, it has been shown to decrease the activity of your amygdala, as well as it lowers the levels of cortisol, so that's a hormone that secretes when you are feeling stress. Um, so people who have a regular practice of this and know how to do it, um, see decreases, even we're seeing that like brain research showing that. So not just something um, that students and people who practice this are feeling. Um, I myself actually, this is like about me a little um, partial to this uh, because I am also a yoga teacher. So when I wanted to get my doctorate, I did a dissertation uh, here at Parkway with high school students uh, where I taught yoga in the PE classes. And I'll say from my research here, the number one thing my high school students said to me afterwards, I said, what was the number one benefit you felt after you had yoga class? And it was always that was the only time all day I felt relaxed when I was finished. And um, one of the things that I really love about it is that anybody can do it. So um, I'll give you two examples of kids I interviewed in my own study. I had one student who would come in and he would um, sit in the back. He started out with his headphones and he only took them out when we were practicing yoga. And then when we were finished, he rolled up his mat and put his headphones back in and he left. Um, and so then I interviewed him and said, one of my questions for him was, does yoga ever help you when you're not in class? And he was like, eh, I don't really think so. Oh, except for actually last week, um, my brother and I, we, we fight all the time. And uh, we were about to get in a fight, and I don't know why, but for some reason I like remembered that thing he told me about like taking a deep breath when I feel like that. So I just walked away and I took some deep breaths, and we didn't fight really weird, and I can't believe I didn't notice that until now. <laughs> um, and I was just probably out my reporter was on because I was doing research with that. <laughs> um, but it was really, that was like such a cool thing for me to see that that for him was now like a tool that he had in his toolbox. Do I think that he would never fight his brother ever again? No. But do I think that he now has a choice in how he wants to respond to that feeling? Yes. Um, the opposite of that, I had. I also interviewed a student in my yoga class who, um, she, I knew, loved yoga, and I was really excited to interview her. Um, she came, sat in the front every single week, told me how much she loved yoga. She was the last one to leave, and she was usually telling me how much she loved it when she was done. Um, so when I interviewed her and I asked her that same question, do you ever use this when you're not in class? Um, her response to me was, yeah, every week, because every time I leave here, Afterwards, I go to my AP history class, which is really difficult for me. And I, I, it's a class that I'm not sure I should even be in. I don't even know if I'm smart enough to be in there. But after I have yoga, I feel like I can participate. I feel like I have something to say. And I feel more confident. Um, so it just shows the spectrum of who can benefit from it and, and who can do it, which is exciting for me. 
and I think for all counselors and anyone working with students dealing with anxiety. Mindfulness is kind of a buzzword going around. Um, the definition I like to use is from John Cabot Sin. He's an um, expert in the field, a national expert, even international to a degree. Um, his definition is that mindfulness is the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment. And another thing that he likes to say about it is like, you could go through a whole entire day and not even remember that you are breathing. So it's like taking that time in the day to go, hey, I'm breathing right now. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's something we do all day and we don't even remember that we're doing it. So being present um, helps people to calm down. It helps us to, um, it helps us to pay attention a little bit more and take some deep breaths. And what I think about this is oftentimes, and how many times we hear adults say to kids, calm down, you gotta calm down, calm down. But we have never taught them how they are supposed to calm down. So to me, mindfulness is something that teaches kids how to calm down. What do I mean when I say that to you? And this is something, these are ways that they can recognize what they're feeling and then use that to calm down. It can be through a formal meditation or just little things in everyday life like remembering, oh, okay, I'm breathing, or my heart's beating, or I'm here at school, I'm alive. Uh, yoga practice, um, that helps students connect movement with their breath, which also can help a cal be a calming mechanism. Um, it can also help students who have symptoms of ADHD. Um, it's time to turn for them to turn their attention inward. So again, my students in my study, one of the things they said, I didn't know that they would like it because I made them put their cell phones away. Um, they didn't get to use them. Um, they didn't really get to talk to each other. And a lot of them ended up saying, yeah, at first I was really worried about that, but afterwards it was kind of cool because that's the only time throughout my entire day I'm not checking in on what someone else is doing or not talking to somebody else or um, not keep listening to somebody else. I'm just paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, it also gives them a nice non-competitive environment. So while I think some competition is, is healthy for our students, um, that is a time for them that like they're not competing against anyone. They don't need to be better than anyone. They just need to show up and do the best that they can. And I think that's really healthy for a lot of our students. So if you'd like to learn more, I will be in room 1109. And oh, okay, I will not ask me afterwards if you would like to learn more. And Thank you very much. We're going to change, for the sake of time, change uh, things up just a little bit. So, uh, before we do that, I want to recognize a couple people. Uh, Laura, again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you being here. Um, and mentioning the whole community. And I think that Ken, put down food, Ken, and it's away. Ken McManus is over here. And speaking of whole community, uh, he leads Parkway's work and the community's work for the Alliance for Healthy Communities and Parkway Coalition. And he has some information for folks to take away if they have any questions. Ken will be available to answer those as well. Um, and then also, um, if you haven't had a chance, I've already made one plug for the Nacho Bar, but there's also the smoothies up there as well. I want to thank uh, the person who runs the kitchen here, Peggy Mitchell, is here tonight. And then assisting her, Susan Barks, thank you for being here. And then we have Chef Dan somewhere around here. So thank you, Marlene and the team, for providing food. So uh, I really do want to honor everybody's time. We, we were hoping to get uh, some opportunities for a breakout session. But I want to offer the opportunity, one, uh, Ron, uh, Marlene, Aaron was up there speaking when we made a little uh, uh, Audible here and uh, Robin, who will all be available to you for further information or further questions. Um, but with this time, we're not going to go and try to squeeze in uh, in five minutes what we're going to do at 30. So modify that so we won't have breakouts today. We'll be available for you as a resource if you have any questions. Um, there will also be an opportunity. Again, it's your nacho bar. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a good evening.